Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be. I'm Jeff Butts from the Mac Observer, and you're watching Terminal Tinkering. This is a podcast where I hack away at computers, mess around with Macs, and just in general tinker with anything I can get my hands on. In this episode, we're going to be diving into Raspberry Pi and using a Raspberry Pi setup to act as an AirPrint server. We will also be looking at how you can create a USB installer for macOS High Sierra. And we'll dive deeper into High Sierra and look at some of the new terminal level commands for Time Machine. So let's get started with installing macOS High Sierra, or rather creating that USB installer that you might need if you want to install from a USB drive or on a Hackintosh. Okay, before you can do anything, you need to make sure of two things. First, you need to make sure you've downloaded the macOS High Sierra installer. Look in Applications. If you see Install macOS High Sierra, you're golden. If not, just go to the App Store, the Mac App Store, and download it from there. When it launches, exit out of it because we're not installing that way. Next, you need to make sure you have a USB flash drive, one that is at least 8 gigabytes, and it should be formatted as a macOS extended journaled partition or HFS Plus journaled with the GUID, GUID partition map, or GPT. Once you've made sure of that, we'll go into Terminal, and we'll type diskutil list to find out what the name is of our installer, our, uh, our USB drive. I named it installer. You can name it whatever you want. We also need to know where it's mounted. So we'll check in volumes. And there it is as installer. So, to create the USB install disk, you need to type sudo, S-U-D-O, then slash applications, slash install macOS high Sierra dot app, slash contents, slash resources, slash create install media, Tell it what volume with dash dash volume slash volumes slash installer. Next switch is dash dash application path. And that would be slash applications slash install macOS high Sierra dot app. Finally, you type no dash dash or hyphen hyphen no interaction so that it doesn't stop you to do anything. Once that's done, you hit enter. It asks for your password. And it gets to work. It will erase anything that's on that USB installer, reformat it, and then get to work putting the install media on there. Once this procedure is done, you can reboot and you will reboot from that USB drive either on your Mac or on your soon-to-be Hackintosh, uh, and you'll be good to go. Now, it's worth noting that if you're installing this to make a Hackintosh, your next step won't be to reboot. Your next step will be to install a bootloader such as Clover or Chameleon. So that is how you go about creating the install media for macOS High Sierra. And so let's move on and talk about Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's say you've got a printer laying around that you wish was AirPrint compatible, but it just isn't. You need some way to be able to connect to that printer. Fortunately, with a Raspberry Pi, you can do exactly that. Now, what is a Raspberry Pi? A Raspberry Pi is a tiny computer about the size of a deck of cards, a little bit larger than an Arduino board. It runs various operating systems. For this project, we'll be using a version of Linux called Raspbian that's based on Debian. And in just a, a short amount of time, we will have this set up as an AirPrint server. 
So it'll make any printer compatible with AirPrint. Now, other things you can do with Raspberry Pi that I'll dive into later, you can actually run a version of Windows 10 on the, uh, on the Raspberry Pi. You can set it up as a home automation server. There's a lot of things you can do. And we'll definitely be digging more into that and, and looking at what it does. So for now, let's go ahead and start setting this up as an AirPrint server. Now I can't record my screen directly from the Raspberry Pi, so I'm gonna SSH into my Raspberry Pi. So I go to terminal and I SSH uh, to pi at 192.168.3.113. You'll need to find out what your particular IP address is in order to access it. It asks for my password. and I'm logged in. To find out the IP address, you just type ifconfig, and there I can see my IP address right there. You'll do that from your Raspberry Pi, not from your Mac. All right, the first thing we wanna do is make sure everything is updated. So we'll do sudo apt-get update, and it asks, oh, it didn't ask for my password. That's interesting. So it's downloading all of the latest packages for Debian or Raspbian Stretch. It builds the package list and it's done. Now what we need to do is on our Raspberry Pi, we need to upgrade. So we'll type sudo once again apt get upgrade okay so it tells me what's going to get installed what's going to get upgraded i'll go ahead and say yes and let all of that run and once that's done we'll be good to go Okay, our update is finished. So now it's time to go ahead and install the servers that we need to create our AirPrint server. So for that, we need Samba and Cups. We'll start off typing sudo, sudo apt get install Samba. This is going to install several other packages. They're perfectly safe. Go ahead and say yes here. It'll fetch the packages and then install them. Once Samba's installed, we can install CUPS, which is an internet or a network print daemon. So we do sudo apt get install CUPS. Once again, we're told that uh, a number of other packages need to be installed. So we say yes, let those download and install. And CUPS is finished installing. So now we need to create an administrative user for being able to manage printers. To do that, we're going to modify our normal login, which is PI to be part of the LP admin group. And the way we do that is through sudo user mod, and I didn't type sudo. So I'll back up and I'll type sudo user mod minus A minus G LP admin pi. This will add the username pi to the LP admin group. And now, I have to do one more step before I can continue showing you this, and that is to turn on remote administration. Okay, once you've installed Samba and Cups and added your administrative user, 
it's probably a good idea to go in and reboot your Pi. So I've rebooted my Pi, and now I'm ready to go ahead and add a printer. So I'll go into Google Chrome on my Mac. I've enabled remote access, and that's something that uh, you'll have to do yourself if you want to be able to remotely access the CUPS printer from your Mac instead of your Raspberry Pi. Now we'll go to Administration. And to get to this, I went to my Raspberry Pi's IP address, colon 631. That's the port that the web interface for CUPS lives on. From the Administration tab, I'll click on Add Printer. It asks me for my username and password. And then I can add a printer. If you have a printer plugged in through USB, you can add that. I have a network printer that I'm going to add right here under Discovered Network Printers. So I choose that. Then I click on Continue. It asks me for a name and a description. Sharing. Click on Share This Printer to make sure that it's shared. And then click on Continue. Now it wants to know what driver to use. Let's see if there is such a driver for it. So in the absence of a dedicated driver, I'll choose a generic. PCL4 printer. No, let's go with PCL5. I believe that it supports PCL5. And I add printer. Under general settings, I will specify what my defaults are. This doesn't allow for the color options that I have on the printer, but I'll take care of that later. This is just for, for the purpose of showing you how to do that. We've rebooted, we've added our printer. We need to fine tune a few settings, which we've already done actually. Uh, share printers connected to the system is done. And we allowed remote administration. The next thing we need to do is make sure power management is turned off. If we're using our Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi, otherwise you'll lose your AirPrint server when your Raspberry Pi goes to sleep. So to do that, we type sudo iwconfig wlan0 power off and if I type iwconfig I can see that where power management was on previously it is now off so we're good to go there next we need to install bonjour for airprint in order to do that, we type sudo apt get install avahi discover. And now it's installed. So let's see how it works. In order to do that, I'm going to open up my reflector app, open my iPhone. I'll go to a web page. Just go to Twitter. Now I choose the share sheet extension, the print icon. It asks me to select my printer. And you can see my printer is listed on my Raspberry Pi, ready for me to use. That's all there is to it. There are some other things that you might fine tune if you so choose, but that's the basics of it. So that is Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and take a look at Time Machine and the terminal TMUtil. Okay, let's finish off by talking about TMUtil. This is a 
command line terminal command that is used to manage Time Machine. And new to High Sierra, we've got some additional verbs to go along with TMUtil that deal with local snapshots that Time Machine takes of your APFS volume. So let's take a look at the man page for TMUtil and just glance at what these new verbs do. They're at the very end, so we have to go a ways. Local snapshot will create a new time machine snapshot of your APFS volume. This isn't the same as an APFS snapshot, but it does have basically the, the same, same basic function. List local snapshots, and then your mount point will list all of the snapshots of that volume. List local snapshot dates will list the creation date of the local time machine snapshots. Delete local snapshots will get rid of a certain date's time machine snapshot. And thin local snapshots will purge a specific byte or megabyte amount of space to free up extra space on your drive. So... Let's take a look. TMUtil list local snapshots. And you can see the the various time machine snapshots that exist on my root drive. TMUtil list local snapshot dates will give you dates of when the local snapshots were created. And this shows it for all disks. And again, you can use delete local snapshots for a specific date. You can use thin local snapshots to purge a certain amount of disks uh, of snapshots to free up disk space on your drive. So that's TMUtil, as it involves APFS, there's a lot more you can do with TMUtil, as you can see from, from the various options here. You can kick off a time machine backup. You can list all of your backups and quite a bit more. So that's TMUtil, and that is all for this episode of Terminal Tinkering. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you learned at least something from this episode of Terminal Tinkering. As always, I welcome your comments and your feedback. You can write me at jeffb at macobserver.com or catch me on Twitter as at Clefmeister. Until next time, keep tinkering and have fun.